Hey everyone, and welcome to the Grow Hemp series. Today, we'll be taking a look at converting a female plant into a hermaphrodite. But first, I want to talk a little bit about our sponsor, Way of Leaf. Now, we talk a lot on this channel about how to make your own medicinal hemp and CBD. But the one thing we don't really cover are the effects of CBD, the benefits it provides, or even just how it works when infused into different products. And that's where Way of Leaf comes in. With a ton of CBD articles, guides, product reviews, and even recipes for making your own medicinal products, there is a wealth of information on this site. And given that I've used Way of Leaf articles before in my research, I can stand behind the information this company provides as a sponsor for this channel. So be sure to check them out at wayofleaf.com CBD. This test scroll was done a long time ago and documented my first attempt at utilizing colloidal silver to convert a female plant into a hermaphrodite plant. It was also during a time where I was testing out a lot of different things as well. So I'll go over each as the plant develops. This grow was started with a feminized seed in a fabric pot with a potting soil that has no built-in fertilizers in it. It was also started in the middle of the winter time with the temperatures at around mid 60 degrees Fahrenheit during the day and in the high 40s at night. Both of these were done to see how far a plant could grow with the suboptimal conditions. And because of this, the initial growth is extremely stunted and slow. The plant is then housed in a greenhouse, but it isn't insulated, so there's no protection from the cold temperatures, and I'm doing this mainly so it protects the camera from the rain. Also, since the daylight hours during this time is well under 12 hours a day, I'm using a 20 watt LED grow light during the nighttime to keep the plant in the vegetative stage. I'm going to fast forward a little bit more than usual since the plant's growth is going to be extremely slow to start. The plant does continue to grow though, so it's still able to survive even with these harsh conditions. Now that it seems like the plant is at its limit in terms of growth, it's time to give it a helping hand to see if a couple of changes could help the plant completely recover. I'm first adding in a synthetic fertilizer into the potting soil. This is the super crappy slow release ones that are built into the cheapest potting mixes on the market and I'm using it here since I've never tried it before at this point and wanted to use it at least once to make sure I have some experience with it. And on top of that, to help shield the plant from the cold, I've insulated the greenhouse with some bubble wrap, which even with the large gaps at the bottom of the greenhouse, it still increased the temperatures by a good amount especially during the daytime. And you can see with the increase in the nutrients as well as warmer temperatures, the plant was able to completely recover, with the new leaves growing to be significantly larger than the previous ones. And now that it looks like the plant has made a full recovery, it's time to spray some colloidal silver on it while also turning off the LED grow lights at night so that the plant can start flowering. I'm spraying a 
20 parts per million mix of colloidal silver on the plant, one and two times a day. And generally, you'll only want to spray on the colloidal silver before the lights come on or right before the lights go off as the beads of colloidal silver will magnify the lighting which can burn up the leaves. However, with this grow, since just about every day is cloudy now, combined with the cold weather, it means that I can pretty much spray this anytime during the day. Oh, and I should probably mention that I'm almost always spraying two times a day. I only said one or two times earlier because sometimes I forget to spray in the morning or at night once a week or so. But in general, especially with how low the parts per million of the colloidal silver I'm using, you'll want to do it twice a day. At this point, the pollen sacs on the plant are clearly visible throughout, but I'm still spraying it once a day until pollen sacs start to open. Pollen sacs take about two weeks to fully mature, which is a lot quicker than the time it takes for a female bud to mature, so we'll just need to wait a little longer to see what happens. In just So I was expecting the pollen to come pouring out of the pollen sacs, similar to that of a male plant. However, what I didn't know at the time was that hermaphrodite pollen sacs produces significantly less pollen than their male counterparts, to the point where sometimes it's not even visible or can be straight up blanks. So while I was ready to collect the pollen to start making feminine seeds, I couldn't find any to collect once they started to open. And I figured maybe I did something wrong and just kept the grow going for a while longer to see if anything would change, which nothing did. So I just discarded the entire plant. In hindsight, what I should have done was to place another female plant next to this one to try and catch any small bits of pollen that could have been produced. And you'll see this play out in the next two grow logs, where we'll try this process again with better results each time. One final note. I also should have used a colloidal silver solution with something higher than 20 parts per million, as I've had a lot more success when using a parts per million of around 50 or so, or even higher. But if the higher parts per million colloidal silver is harder to obtain, you should be fine going down all the way to about 30. And that's it for now. Like the content? Then be sure to check out our beginner's guide to creating CBD products from scratch. Available at Amazon in print and digital with links in the description below. You can also find us at hempinapot.com.